Hi guys, happy new year. Two updates before we start this video. One, I have bangs. <laughs> Two, I speak really fucking fast in this video. I don't know if I was on some shit. Uh, I'm just kidding, I don't do drugs. But like for real, I think I was just so hyper and my ADHD just like kicked me in the ass because I can't understand anything I say in this video. <laughs> Like, I literally look like a hamster on a wheel because this bitch is running for its life, but you don't understand what they're running for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave in the description box little timestamps of what I'm talking about and when. So, like, feel free to skim through or watch the whole thing if you want to see a hamster running on a wheel. Um, love you guys. Hope you guys enjoy this video. And peace. What trends are you seeing with creators being able to monetize? How do you feel about TikTok's longevity as a platform? What should creators watch out for in contracts with management so we're not scammed? Are you guys secretive with how much money you make with your brand sponsorships? I'm not. So today we'll be talking about the future of the creator economy. We'll be talking about cryptocurrency, how creators make money, and how to get brand deals all on this video. If you guys want to know more, all you got to do is keep on watching. I'm literally sitting on the edge of a fucking cliff because I want to be a committed YouTuber. All right, let's get started with the first question. I'm literally going to fall. Oh, holy shit. Oh my God. Hi, this is Jader on the Ask Jade Show. Hey, how you doing? My name is Devin, I'm from the UK. Hey Devin, what's your question? How can I help you? What are the main things you look for in a small business before agreeing to a quick promo or a brand deal? So basically, how do you navigating, working with influencers? Are you a small business owner yourself? Yes. It really depends on the size. If you're looking at an influencer that's above a million on any platform, yeah. you, it's a different strategy. So let's just focus on micro influencers because that's a, a very easily tapped niche in terms of like kind of scanning started. So as a micro influencer, that's anyone from zero to uh, like a hundred thousand typically. These people typically open their DMs, barely emails. You'd be su like surprised how lack of emails a lot of influencers don't check. I would say the best way to reach out and how I've received brand deals is a very personalized email or DM that is from the founder's account. I find that if it's from the company's Instagram page, it can feel the very lack of personality. So if it's coming from your personal page or it's like an email address that's, you know, like your name at the company name, it's so much more personal. You don't know how much that makes a difference just starting with that so I like it when it's personable typically a lot of the good influencers you have have mutual friends so if you're trying to find the right talent go to your top people and ask them two or three friends they recommend that's a great way to start now in terms of pricing I think there is no set model you're gonna see that like a lot of influencing is negotiation so a lot of people will accept your rate or not so you kind of basically have to just assume there's gonna be pushback and you just have to say this is what we can pay you and let me know if you accept a lot of people do affiliate codes that's typically if you have no budget at all that's typically typically okay. A lot of companies right now I see do like a virtual like influencer get together. The reason why you can do this, it, it's really important to do this quarterly is because you basically get to make the people that you work with become friends with each other. And when you build a strong relationship with people, they want to promote your company more because they care about each other. So I would say your next phase you. is not necessarily reaching out to more people, but creating more of a community within your ambassadorship. And that's what I would say is like the future of like, in terms of like really getting strong promotion and better conversions. I agree 100%. Great chatting with you, Devin. I hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you so much for your help. Bye. All right, guys. So Devin asked amazing questions about influencer marketing when it comes to your store. I have a whole course with Oberlo about that. You guys can check in the link in the description box. Okay. If you guys are so far enjoying this video, make sure you give this video a like. I am literally risking my life for you guys. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Jade. You're on the Ask Jade show. What's up? What's up? Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm a little hungry. I'm gonna eat later. Okay. What are you going to eat? Some pupusas. I don't know if, you ever, if you've ever heard of those. What's that? It's basically a Hispanic hot pocket. Oh, that sounds so good. What's your question today, John? So I was going to ask you about like your progress on music. More on like <laughs> what you've been doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what you've been trying to do to improve like the music making process that you've been doing? Holy shit, I've never received this question before. Are you a musician? Are you a musician? I wouldn't call myself that yet, but I just really recently took the music too. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. How did you know I do music? I'm so curious. I don't tell a lot of people that. Okay. Okay. So remember that live stream you had like a week ago, and there was that one person who said that he was taking for final. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's me. I, so I already <laughs> talking about the music thing there. Okay. So for those who don't know, I. Used to play violin for literally 10 years of my life. 
So I was classically trained through a private a violin teacher for 10 years. So I learned through that. Now in terms of like when we're tying in social media and like more music, let's not like fucking Beethoven or some shit. I think there's a whole different way to approach it. I always say you can improve your musicianship and as an artist as doing your scales. And when I say by doing your scales, I don't literally mean like doing scales. I mean doing the thing that's boring as fuck, but allows you to get really good at your craft. But in terms of like music productions, I always say the easiest way to jump, like jumpstart uh, a career is like recreating things. So covers, you know, making a popular song into your own style, starting through that and posting it. The key is consistently, like I would say that's the fastest way to improve if you don't have like a private teacher. Do you have any other questions for me? I got like one question about fitness. <laughs> okay, what's up? Why are you chasing the dump truck? What am I? <laughs> Why am I ta chasing a jump truck? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> So on my Instagram, I basically decided to tell everyone that I'm trying to achieve a dump truck. I think my reason is like, you know, why not? <laughs> Are you not chasing a dump truck either? I already got a dump truck. Oh, shit. It was great chatting with you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Jade. You too. All right. Have a good day. Bye. All right, guys. So we're going to go on to the next caller. I'm so surprised you guys catch up with my life. If you guys don't know, there's a lot of like inside jokes, I guess, that John asked. So if you haven't followed me already, follow me on Instagram. You guys can see me achieving a dump truck, which is me essentially trying to grow an ass. You guys can see my Instagram story of me playing music, which I've loved and played from all my life, which I don't tell a lot of people. So if you want to be part of the ultimate squad, follow my Instagram. Cool. <laughs> Hi, you're on the Ask Jay show. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's your name? Sai. Hi, Sai. Where are you from? Chicago. Hey, what's going on? What's your question? I was going to ask, like, how's, how's this going, I guess? How's life? How's life? Oh! Gosh, I no one asks me that, honestly. Um, let's see, right now, like I said, I'm on the edge of a cliff, but before that, I was working on a few things at my agency, so I guess the main thing that's been stressing me out is like figuring out how to build a board of advisors. I'm trying to learn like how to always get feedback because I've always been a little bitch and only wanted to listen to myself, but I've, I've realized like I need more mentors and people to advise me, so that's, what, that, that's what's like been new with my company, preparing for 2021 and all that fun stuff. How did you find me? <laughs> I'm just curious. Honestly, I think it was a TikTok and it was pretty funny. Oh um, shit! Yeah, I was like, hmm, business. Um, I'm, well, I'm in business right now. Well, I graduated with still an engineering degree, and I was like, not happy. But uh, I did more IT stuff, and I work at like a. Well, I kind of work with Bitcoin. I mean, I'm trying to get into to crypto too. I mean, I I did a little bit in 2017, but I I, di I didn't invest at when I should have this year. Now it's spiking. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm pretty happy. It's 27k. I like. Well, the thing is, I like to delve into other cryptos. That some of them, you know, they do healthcare stuff. Some of them do video games. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Bitcoin's cool. It's decentralized. Well, it was great chatting with you, Sai. I hope you have a great one. You as well. You as well. Thanks so Take much. Care. Take care. Bye. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Sometimes I forget how amazing the Dharma Nation is. With our conversation with me and Sai, I do want to dive into this. I think cryptocurrency is so interesting to me just because one of the main issues I have in terms of like the creator economy is, you know, how creators get paid. If, if you guys don't know on TikTok, I make a lot of content around how much influencers should charge, how to get paid online. And one of the things I haven't talked about is the issue with the current payment model. Like right now, if you are an influencer, you get paid through a big brand. It will take 30 to 90 days to get paid after you post a content. But typically you get paid through US dollars if you're in the US and I think this is a huge issue because sometimes there's huge delays and contracts get broken and I feel like what's really intriguing with cryptocurrency is the ability um, specifically in Ethereum the ability to write contracts in the payment that enable you to get that currency and the fact that it's like frictionless and you can basically engage with it anywhere is so interesting anyways my whole spiel is look into Bitcoin it's so interesting and I feel like a lot of people are only talking about like oh it's spiking but not looking deeper into like the benefits so yeah if you guys want a whole video about like an intro's guide to cryptocurrency, let me know. I'm a dummy, literally a dumbass in Bitcoin, but I'd be happy to talk more about blockchain and overall investments if you guys want a whole video about that in a very simplified way, because I'm not very bright in that yet. I gotta stop doing this. All right, guys, so I don't have any more callers, so we're gonna do a quick little intermission and take some of your Instagram DM questions and answer that. Okay, so it's the Ask Jade Show DM edition. Okay, so the first question is from Carl. He asks, what trends are you seeing with creators being able to monetize? So I think this ties in really well with the cryptocurrency influencer talk. You know, the main easiest way to get money through influencing, I hate saying that, is brand deals. Like getting paid through a McDonald's is 
the fastest way to gain income because it's an upfront payment of making content. Now, I think the future of building a business for creators is equity-based brand deals. So instead of just having, I don't know, like McDonald's pay you for a 30 second sponsorship, I think the future is having, you know, equity in McDonald's for making that content if you post in the course of three years. For those who don't know what equity is, it's basically when you have a share in the company. So when the company sells, you have an earning of that selling price. So if this pen went public or, you know, I sold the company for 200 million and I owned 1% of the equity, I would get I would get $2 million. So equity is really only valuable once you sell your share, but I'm pretty sure Charlie D'Amelio is a recent investor in a credit card company called Step. So what she did is she promoted this credit card company Step, but she also invested in the company, therefore having equity. So, you know, say over three years, she keeps promoting Step because she genuinely likes the credit card, hopefully. Um, in three years, she can decide to sell that share for how many X it grew because she's growing the brand through her audience. So anyways, it's just a great way to diversify income. And especially when being an influencer is also known as being a starving artist, basically. Um, I feel like creators should be smarter with their money. And one of the ways you can do that in a longer term way is through equity. <laughs> The second thing I think that is going to happen with the creators is food industry. So if you guys don't know, Mr. Beast is a YouTuber with, I believe, like over 20 million followers, and he created his own burger restaurant. Yeah, that's insane. Like, he went all out, created his own fucking restaurant selling burgers, and I think that's genius because I feel like influencers right now tapped into the apparel niche. We've tapped into apps and products, but nobody's really tapped into physical spaces. So hear me out, guys. I think influencers will create the next Disneyland theme park. I think they're going to create the next restaurant food chain. I think there's going to basically any industry that influencers haven't tapped into someone's going to go in there and capitalize on the opportunity so mr beast is a great example but if you guys want to catch on trends early i think the future is experiences restaurants and basically anything in food because it's consumable and it's so hard to get into so a physical spot is new but i think is going to be the direction for a lot of creators to go in I hope that is helpful. Okay. Is Instagram Reels the next thing? I think Instagram Reels is already in the past. Like TikTok is already in the past. What's trending right now is not going to be the future. I think right now the trend is 15 to 60 second videos. That's the trend, that's huge. But I think what we're gonna see is typically what's trending is the non-obvious. And I think something so undermined right now is long form content. Like a lot of people are saying, oh my God, Gen Z's attention span is ever so fleeting. And I honestly disagree. I think that a lot of people are craving quality content. Now people are so used to short form content they want that 60 minute experience that documentary and although it's rare to see content creators putting out 60 minute content you're gonna see people in the industry like streaming and gaming you know obviously go in there already and other creators will like hop on it I really do believe the future is having the short form content to lead towards longer form content like documentaries movies TV shows that's the future because storytelling is so important and if you can captivate people for a long time people value that and I don't know personally for me I mean I just find myself trying to get off TikTok more and trying to spend more time watching movies and Netflix like it doesn't sound very productive but I think just moving my attention from 30 second content to like one hour is helpful because it's just a bit more you're a bit more present with the content and I think a lot of Gen Z and youth is trying to find that presence so I think the future is not like TikTok or whatever it's going to be like taking that content and making longer form versions of it because people want quality and that's the future of that Graham asks how do you feel about TikTok's longevity as a platform could it die like Vine yeah I mean honestly as a creator that been making content for 10 years. I started on YouTube, then went on to Instagram, then went on to TikTok. You know, platforms don't last forever. I don't think TikTok's gonna go away at least for another five years. It's gonna, it's here to stay, but it's inevitable that a company's going to phase out. And in terms of the next platform, I'm not sure. If I knew the answer, I would be a billionaire. So I'm not, so I don't know, but it's gonna phase out. But if it were to, to me, I don't think TikTok's gonna be gone until a while. Clara Lima asks, what should creators watch out for in contracts with management so we're not scammed? Ooh, you guys, you know, that I love legal questions. I am not a lawyer, but I wish I was. And me and my attorney always talk about contracts, so I have some stuff to share. There's three things you need to watch out for in contracts if you ever have one. The first one is the section called likeness and image rights. If you ever see those words, you want to read it and make sure that you're aware that a brand has the ability 
to use your face on their website, on their social media, on their videos without asking you. So this is huge because a lot of creators get paid for a 30 second integration on YouTube, right? Like you get paid to hold the product and post it. But then you sign something that basically says, hey brand, not only do I have to post that, but you have access to reposting this video anywhere you want. So look for that because you need to charge money for that and that's not okay and you have to look for that. And I just, I used to not look at that, look for that. The second thing I think that's really important is look at your agreements for payments. It's not necessarily a scam, but a lot of people assume you get paid instantly. You don't, you get paid 30 to 90 days for corporations typically, later after you post a video. So just look for that because say you're a creator relying on this income, but you don't get it till three months later, you might have some issues. So look for the payment terms. The third thing I really recommend is look at your content guidelines. Do you know how many times I worked with this one influencer? I'm not gonna say her name. She's a huge YouTube following uh, and I love her to death, but we had an issue where the brand said you have to post the link of the website in the description box, but she posted it one paragraph lower in the description box and the brand basically canceled the entire project because we didn't look at the agreement for the contract where you have to post in the first line. So literally we lost money because we didn't post the fucking link a little, a little higher up on the description box and little shit kills you. So look for those three things in your contracts. Hopefully that saves you some time and energy and trust me, legal is really confusing, but I'm here to help you on that. Brion's asks, are you guys secretive with how much money you make with your brand sponsorships? I'm not. I make $500 to $1,000 per TikTok post. For YouTube, it's anywhere from three to 5K. I post this all on my TikTok. So if you guys want to know more about like what other people charge, I make it a whole plethora of content. And I'm pretty transparent with it just because I have nothing to hide. All right, so that was my Q&A. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Ask J Show. I guess I just wanna leave off this note because we talked so much about investing, the future of influencing, equity, all that fun shit. I just wanna say like, all of this doesn't fucking matter if you're not happy. And like, I think there's so many urges, especially when I watch these types of videos. It's so easy to just be like, okay, let's make money tomorrow and just to speed up. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with slowing down. If you had a shitty 2020 and you couldn't make content, you couldn't go to work, you were just depressed or you had issues with mental health or you were just struggling financially, like, let me tell you, you are not alone. This year was fucking hard and you do not need to shit on yourself if you had a bad year or you didn't make as much money as you wanted or make as many followers as you wanted. Like, I think so much of this video can be easily interpreted as I need to hustle and invest and like do all these things. But in actuality, take all this knowledge and do something with it, but also understand that it's okay to take it day by day and you're not gonna become a creator god in a day and really just to enjoy the process. Like, I personally had to tell myself that. I was so mad at myself this year. I Like, the other day I was reflecting over my 2020 goals and I hit only half of them. I was so mad. In terms of revenue, I had only hit 50% of what I wanted to do in terms of like revenue and subscribers, I didn't get there. And I was just so angry at myself and I realized like nobody, nobody had a great year, that everybody was struggling this year and that you're not alone and no one knows what they're doing. Jeff fucking Bezos wakes up, I swear to God, and he's like, I don't know what the future holds. And everybody is not knowing what they're doing. No one knows what the fuck. So honestly, if this encourages you to start something, like just do it because no one knows the answer. It's so okay to slow down before you speed up. And I love you guys. And thanks for being here. I appreciate you for staying on this channel. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Love you, Darmination.